Hello and welcome to What's Your Story. Today we have a wonderful guest. You're going to really enjoy this man. Uh, his name is Ridgely. Oh, Ridgely, I know you so well and I almost screwed up your name. His name is Ridgely Goldsboro. And I met Ridgely on a, uh, on a movie set, which we'll tell you more about later. But Ridgely, welcome. We're so glad you're here today. I am delighted to be here and have a great conversation with my great friend, Judy Morial. Well, I'm sorry I almost screwed up your name. I can't believe it. I, I try so hard to get things right, and then my brain goes, boop. So. I thought that only happened to me. <laughs> well, listen, Ridgely is a wonderful person at solving problems. He loves to solve problems, and he loves to go take uh, complex subjects and complex issues and work them out and straighten them out and you've been doing this since you were about 16 years old I understand and yeah. and you've you've founded and run 45 companies yes I am a psychologically unemployable serial <laughs> entrepreneur I was just gonna say I bet you're a serial entrepreneur from the word go right and, and by the way, of those 45 companies, two or three were quite successful, four or five were moderately successful, and the rest were highly educational. Wonderful. Well, that's a good way to say it, isn't it? Highly educational. But you know, uh, it's said that most small businesses fail in the first year, and mm -hmm. you've been very successful with many of your businesses. And mm -hmm. uh, well, you've just been successful, period. Uh, Richley is a writer, and he's also, uh, he's an author of what, 16 books, I think? 19 now. 19. 19 now, wow, that's amazing. Well, we were in a movie together, uh, one of these motivational movies, this is how we met. And uh, I liked Ridgely so much and we were sitting out in the room waiting for our turn to be in the movie and we were having such a good time, we were asked to leave the building. So, <laughs> do you remember that? We were that? making too much noise, Judy. <laughs> we were just really having such a, such a good time. Now, Ridgely is the founder, the founder of Mind Types and also the Customer Conversion Formula. Would you tell us about those things, please? Well, at the end of the day, if you think about anything that happens online, there's only two aspects to online marketing of any kind. Number one, how do people find you? Number two, what happens when they do? That's it. There is nothing more to it. In the industry, they call that traffic and conversion. How do people find you is traffic. What happens when they do is conversion. So of the 19 books that I've written, five of them are on emotional intelligence and brain biology with a specific focus on how does the brain make decisions, including the decision to buy your product, buy your service, uh, join your tribe, be a part of whatever you're doing. And so the customer conversion formula is all about using brain biology to convert more prospects into customers. R literally, what happens in the brain? How do we go about the process of making a decision? What does it look like? And could we somehow orchestrate it so that we speak to the decision-making part of the brain, thereby gaining ninja powers of influence over the rest of the world? That's and by the way, amazing. it applies at home, it applies in relationships, it applies in sales, obviously, but it applies to everything. That's amazing, that's amazing. So. Uh if, if we went through your, your course here, uh, would I be able to learn to do that, to uh, talk to that part, That's the, the decision-making part of the brain of other people? Yeah, so here's how it basically works. If you look at a cross-section of the brain from above, around the perimeter, you have what's called the neocortex. Mm -hmm. Most people call that the thinking brain. It's responsible for logic, data, information, features, benefits, speech, word, and language, the fact that we understand each other at this very moment is because of the neocortex. I think you'd agree, Judy, it's pretty important, right? I would. Yeah, here's the thing though. The neocortex doesn't make decisions. Decisions are made in the limbic or feeling brain. We make decisions based on feelings and then we justify them with our neocortex, with our logic. So the, the, the limbic brain is literally at the heart of the brain. It's surrounded by the neocortex. We always go like this, talk about the heart space, right? Talk mm -hmm. about making emotional decisions. Well, all decisions are emotional. How many times has this happened to you, Judy? All the data and information points to taking this action at this moment, and at the very last second you go, whoa, 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 this doesn't feel 
right. Yes, yes. And you back out of that in that moment. Yes. That's your limbic brain deciding that doesn't feel right. No, we're not doing that anymore. But here's the challenge. The limbic brain doesn't understand words. Those come from the neocortex. The neocortex doesn't understand feelings. Those come from the limbic or feeling brain. Yet decisions are made in the feeling brain. So how do we find, how do we bridge that gap and still use words to touch the feeling brain? That's the key. And when you understand that, you understand how to have massive, massive powers of influence over others' decision-making. And so that's what we teach. That's what I help people understand, big companies all over the world, uh, help them understand that at the end of the day, you've got to speak to the limbic brain. You've got to use limbic or emotional messaging if you want to convince people to do anything, including like you the next day. Exactly. Now, does that have anything to do with neuro-linguistic programming? So a lot, but it's a little bit different because NLP focuses on how to use words to paint pictures in the brain and then gain influence in that way. Whereas this is much more about touching the heart space, touching ah. people here where they live. Limbic messaging is largely invitational. So imagine that I say something like this. You know, Judy, I'm really happy to be on your show because your success matters. Ooh. Would you agree with that? Yes. Right, because I just invited you into a thought. Your success matters. And what happened to you, you're, everybody watching this is seeing you nod your head. Yes. So imagine that you could create language that caused people to constantly nod their heads yes. That means that they are automatically predisposed to say yes to whatever you're offering them, whether it's to join your group, hire you, buy your product, buy your service. We call it inducing a yes state. Oh. How do you do that? By using limbic messaging. I love it. And that's it. why, so like, because your success matters, flows so easily, I can use it. I can even be on a webinar and say, I'm going to use limbic messaging to help you understand limbic messaging. I'm going to use it on you right now. You know why? Because your success matters. Who agrees with that? Put a why in the chat and get why, 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 why. I said, you realize I just used the limbic message on every one of you, right? And it'd be just completely transparent because you can feel it. You uh -huh. can feel it when I say something like that. Yes, I felt it. I yeah. felt it. It's all about beliefs and talking about what you believe. Nobody cares about what you do. Somebody do you else down the street does the same thing. You don't care about what anybody else does. Think of, think of your five best friends. You don't care about what they do. You care about who are they? What do they stand for? What do they believe? Does that resonate with your beliefs? And here's the thing. I don't care how great you are, how talented you are, how fabulous your product is, how amazing your service is. If you don't know how to express that to the world, right. they will not know about that fabulousness. That's amazing. Listen, do you have a book on this subject? I have many books. On the, <laughs> the reason I <laughs> asked was because, of them. because I want to get one. I want to read it right away. <laughs> yeah, no, it's super, super powerful. But, you know, for, for anybody that's watching, just I have a free course. You can go check it out and go watch tons of videos and learn how to do this stuff. It's at customerconversionformula.com. Just go there. Oh, great. And we'll put it on the it, screen so people can see that customerconversionformula.com. Yeah, it's phenomenal. And I literally have been, uh, I've been now lecturing and teaching and working with corporations in 35 countries on every continent except Antarctica. Well, that is absolutely wonderful. And thank you for the free gift. I mean, my audience is going to absolutely love it. I love it. I can't wait to do it. I wanted to ask you a question about authenticity. Um, you're very big on being authentic. Why mm -hmm. is that so important today? because we are barraged all day long with massive amounts of media, of messages, of stuff flying at us on a constant basis, whether it's social media, podcasts, advertising, television, it, it's, it's relentless. And none of that is going to cause somebody to make a decision in your favor unless it feels right. Right? right? It's got to feel right. How do you do that? By being authentic and genuine. 
the first thing that people must buy before they ever buy your product or your service is you. Who are you? Can you become really good at sharing you with the world? Can you become so genuine, so authentic that people say, that's who I'm looking for, best decision, or that's not the right fit for me, second best decision, worst decision, let me think about it. Mm. Puts me right in my neocortex thinking brain where I don't make decisions. Ah. So if you're selling something and you have the right person in front of you, the best decision is yes. The second best decision is no. I would rather be so good at expressing me and my story that those who don't feel like they're the right fit, go find somebody that is the right fit for them. Everybody's happier. And I only end up attracting ideal customers. The ones who believe what you believe, who resonate with who you are, who act as ambassadors for you and your business, who become raving fans and even friends. Yeah. Some people are calling this the new currency. Would you agree with that? A hundred percent. I believe that authenticity <clears throat> is absolutely the new currency. Think about this, Judy. The number one reason why anybody buys anything by an enormous margin is trust. Trust is the absolute top of the heap. The cost, the product itself, the quality, everything else is way down below trust. If there's a trust factor, people want to buy. Nobody wants to be sold, but everybody loves to buy. Yes. If I trust Judy, I want to buy what Judy has to sell. I want to make that decision in Judy's favor. How do you create trust? By being genuine and authentic. With so much messaging out there today, people flat out can smell the, the snakes oil salespeople, right? They can smell people that are trying to manipulate or work mm -hmm. you over, whatever. They've got a spidey sense about it, like a little radar that goes, <laughs> ling, 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 this doesn't feel right. And they're gone. Yeah. We need authenticity is the number one currency out there because there's so much noise. You've got to connect, build that trust so that people then make a decision in your favor, whatever the decision is that you're looking for. Right, right. Well, originally, I feel like I'm an authentic person. I, I think people who know me pretty much what you see is what you get. But how do I how do I use that or how do I create it um, to make other people know that this is really me? Right. By speaking in limbic messages, by talking about what matters to you because your success matters, because the environment matters, because your happiness matters. You say something like that and people go, that's right, my happiness does matter. I, I agree with Judy. Or you say something like, uh, I believe in lasting relationships. Well, do you believe in lasting relationships, Judy? Yes, I We've hope been friends so. a really long time. We have a lasting relationship. I'm a constant contributor to your yes. magazine and what you do. We have a lasting relationship. So when I say we believe in lasting relationships, I watched you nod your head. Mm -hmm. What am I doing? I'm Inducing nodding too. State. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. So we believe in lasting relationships. What's another limbic message that's really powerful? You deserve. You deserve anything. So you know what, Judy? You deserve to be heard. I do. Thank you. That's right. There's another <laughs> limbic message. So wow. now you start to see you deserve to be heard. We believe in lasting relationships because your success matters. And it's sprinkled all over everything that represents Judy Morio. What's going to happen? People are going to say, you know what? I get her. She gets me. I resonate with what she's saying. She's my kind of people. I bet her product is exactly what I'm looking for. I'm buying. I like it. I like that a lot. I like it a lot. So what changes are happening in expressing one, per, you know, like how would I make changes to express my message the right way? So the key is this. We make decisions based on a feeling and then we justify them with logic, right? So the key is to make sure that the first part of the messaging is limbic, is feeling, is emotionally based messaging. And then you can have the rest. You can talk about the features, the benefits, all that stuff, as soon as you have somebody nodding their head in your favor. I remember I was working with a venture capital company, $27 billion operation, right? And they had a book, they were going out to raise money. 
And they said, can you help us with limbic messages? And I said, yes. And let me tell you where they should be. They should be at the top of every single page. Um, so that when somebody opens the book and they see, we believe in A players. The investor goes, I believe in A players. Next one. We believe in teamwork. I believe in teamwork. And then they read the information. They raised $350 million in six weeks. Wow. Yeah. Why? Because every time they're seeing the limbic message first, somebody goes like this, that's right. Then the data and information that allows them to justify whatever it is that they want to do because they felt good first. Uh -huh. And then the information backed up their logic in their neocortex or thinking brain. This is the crazy thing about this is it is 100% foolproof. Why? Because biology always works. When you're freezing, what do you want to do? Get warm. When you're starving, what do you want to do? Eat. Sometimes or most of the time or every time? Every time. That's exactly right. Because biology always works. So if you have the biology of the brain working in your favor, you're going to get way more decisions made in your favor. There's no way it doesn't happen. We are all warm-blooded mammals. We travel in packs. We're built exactly the same. The biology of the brain works the same for all of us. It's just a matter of becoming adept at using it so that you can, in my opinion, so that you can bring your brilliance to the world, so that you can bring your magic, whatever that magic is, you need to be great at telling your story. That's why I love this, uh, the name of your show, What's Your Story? We have to become great at telling our story if you want to have massive influence. Exactly, exactly. Now, where is this going to take us in the future? So <clears throat> I think that the noisier it gets, the more people who are great at sharing their humanity their realness, their genuineness are going to stand out because it's noise, 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 noise. Boop. Oh, that person's different. Noise, 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 noise. Boop. Wow. I, I'm feeling something. And, and let me, let me just give you an example. It doesn't matter whether it's a service, whether it's a product, whether it's whatever. So I look around my desk and I have, I'm a big water drinker. So I have a water bottle, right? Yeah. So I want to, what is what is the messaging for a water company sound like? It's usually something like this. At ABC Water, we have the purest water from the deepest stream with all the vitamins, antioxidants, and minerals you need to hydrate your body even after a long workout. Want to buy some? No. And it motivates nobody to make a decision in favor of the water because all it's doing is speaking to the neocortex, the thinking brain, features and benefits. Listen to this you're going to experience the difference, not just hear it, you're gonna feel it. Okay, I'm ready. At our water, we believe that the body is a temple and that only the finest ingredients should ever be put into it. We have the purest water from the deepest stream with all the antioxidants you need to hydrate your body. Wanna join the cause? Yes. Wow. You can feel it. So different. You don't different. even think it. You can feel the difference. Yes. Yes limbic messaging i love it. it is in in the hands of who can be the most genuine the most authentic and really really good at telling the story of who you are to the world that's amazing wow yeah. you are so smart i love hanging out with you no wonder you're my friend <laughs> <laughs> you know what it's such a it's such a joy to be able to share something that can help anyone yes if you're a business owner if you're um, a person who wants to have more influence anyway as a leader or whatever you need to become really good at telling your story who or even you? to get along with your family members yeah imagine that you know what they stand for imagine that you know what they believe imagine that you know what pushes their button what they're great at what they're not Right, my wife, for example, is a trust person. She's very, very much a trust person. It's everything to her. So what does that mean? It means that if I love her, which I do, then I'm gonna pay attention to what commitments I make more than the person that I know doesn't really, is not, they're much more loosey-goosey about that kind of stuff. It's gonna influence my behavior with everybody that I come into contact with based on my better understanding of who they are and what they believe. 
How do I know that? Only if they're good at telling their story. Otherwise, how can I know? Yes, yes. And you tell some wonderful stories. Uh, uh, audience, Richley writes for My Choices magazine. It's choicesonlinemedia.com, and you can access the magazine there. And Ridgely writes stories and fables and wonderful things. They're, they're not always educational. They're sometimes just, uh, just stories for enjoyment. But I love them because there's always a lesson somehow. Even though I say they're not educational, there's a lesson in them. And sometimes I have to read them a couple times to pick up the exact <laughs> lesson. Yeah, you're good. You're a great writer. I really enjoy it. And, and you speak all over the world. You speak several languages, I understand. And so you're quite popular in South America as well. Yeah, I was really blessed to, uh, the reason I became fairly well known in South America is because Jim Rohn, uh -huh. the, the fabulous business philosopher, uh, Tony Robbins mentor, right? Jim Rohn uh, was my mentor and I was Jim's voice all through Latin America. So if you buy a book right now of Jim Rohn's, it'll be in my voice, oh. and, um, uh, which is super fun. I mean, and you've and got so a good I had voice to too. I love your voice. Oh, thank you very much. It was kind of fun because I'd be standing side by side with Jim on stage and he'd be speaking Jim Rohn. And you know, and you just do that crazy Jim Rohn voice that he has. And then I had to say the same thing you just said in Spanish. Right? <laughs> so it was a, like a really training on the fly. And I think obviously it was a huge influence in my life to be around somebody of that stature and who has influenced so many people. Many believe he's one of the, the grandfathers of all of personal development, if you will. And um, yes, oh, so Latin America. I, I think that. he's influenced all of us. You know, he was just a, an incredible man. And but so are you. I mean, you're an incredible person. I always love to listen to you speak, and I always learn so much. Even like today from this conversation, I'm really learning a lot here. Oh, and by right. the way, tell your lovely wife hello. She's wonderful. You know, if I if I send a message to you that I need so and so, she gets back to me right away and says it's on its way. You know, she's, yeah. she's terrific. She's when you said uh, about her really valuing trust, she gives that out too. You know, you know that if you ask for something, you can trust her. She takes care yeah. of it. To the point of being ridiculous. She, <laughs> she's like a detailed maniac. And uh, fortunately, she runs most of my life and it stays in organ organized because of that. Yeah. So, so what's so next would, for you, Ridgely? I mean, I you've done everything. What's next? Is there anything left to do? You know what's interesting? People have said to me many times, what's, your, what's the best book you've ever written? And my answer is, well, hopefully the next one. Yes, yes. Right? What is the best speech you've ever given? Well, hopefully the next one. What's the best TV presentation you've ever done? Hopefully the next one. I believe that the legacy uh, of those of us who are in the personal development, personal growth field, who, who are basically students of the human condition, and how and all of the myriad incarnations that takes making people better people making leaders better leaders helping salespeople sell more stuff whatever it may be the human condition to me that study never ever stops and the legacy if you will is the body of work that we leave behind it's not one book it's not one speech it's not one presentation it's the body of work that touches people and influence people in some kind of a positive way. So for me, next is more of the same, continuing to do the work. You know, I'm such a geek, Judy, I have like all these degrees. And I just literally last December finished a four year master's degree in global citizenship and value creating education at DePaul University. Amazing. Why? Because I'm a geek for no reason. So I have a master's in education no intention of becoming a formal academic but of course all we do in this role is educate right yes, educating yes. about communication educating about messaging educating about the limbic brain etc so there's a lot of education but i just finished a master's program and i gotta tell you i forgot how hard it is to do a <laughs> master's program those are no yeah. joke that's yeah. my second one so i, I was like okay, i know guys. and you have a law degree too i do i have a law degree also uh, so I have lots of diplomas that are up in the attic. <laughs> but you know, this lifelong learning is so important. And that's, I believe, what you're saying is that as long as we're alive, we need to be learning something. Jim used to say, I love this quote, he used to say, don't worry that much about where you are right now or who you are right now. 
but worry a great deal about who you are becoming. I love that. I like worry. that too. Because we are every day becoming something more, someone more, you know, making things happen. I, I love it. I think a lot of people are trying to go out there somewhere and search around and find their place when really and truly we have to search around in here, don't we? Jim used to also say happiness is an inside job. <laughs> and while I can support you in your process, I can't do the process for you. I can only, I can be there, I can encourage, I can inspire. I love the, uh, the debates that Zig Ziglar and Jim Rohn used to have between the difference between motivation and education. Uh -huh. And Jim used to say, Zig, if you just motivate people, but you don't educate them, then you have a bunch of motivated fools. <laughs> and Zig used to say, well, if you just educate people and you don't motivate them, then you have a bunch of smart people who don't do anything. So what's the, t what's the solution? You got to do both. You have to, A, gain more information, more knowledge through things like what's your story, right? Those, this program. And then also find that space of inspiration and motivation, that thing that keeps you going all the time. I think both are equally important. Uh, and it's kind of becomes like a little bit like your shower. Do you shower every day? Yes. Do you brush your teeth every day? Yes. Do you wash your mind on a daily basis? Oh, oh, I guess I ought to pay attention to that. Yeah, do something, read something, listen to something, watch something, hang out with Judy, do something to <laughs> constantly be washing this, cleaning the weeds out. Because one thing is for sure, if you have a garden, you may or may not get flowers, but you're going to get weeds. That's weeds for sure. are coming for sure. <laughs> and the only way to keep that garden pristine is to pull the weeds out on a constant basis and plant something else. Yes. Now, I have a question about this limbic brain. Is there a way that we talk to ourselves using our limbic brain? Does that make a difference how we talk to ourselves? Well, I think that if you get really, really clear on what you stand for and what you believe, to remind yourself of that is important. I was on the phone uh, about an hour ago with Tom Beal, and Tom obviously was partners with Rich Sheffern. Tom knows everybody there's nobody that tom doesn't know and he's amazing and he said something because we're I'm, I'm about to launch a big product uh, uh part of the customer conversion formula suite of products a much higher uh ticket product in a couple of weeks and tom said you know something you have to be confident and remind people of your awesomeness ah. if you bring awesomeness on a daily basis and you, are, and you show up in that way, it's the same thing about telling what's your story. You have to be confident enough to be able to share that. Say, look, if you get this product, I'm gonna help you. And I over deliver, it's what I do. And here's the proof, and here's more proof, and here's more proof, and here's more proof, and here's more proof. So you can have the confidence, but at the end of the day, it is really important to become great at telling your story and unafraid to say, look, if you're looking for help, Maybe I can do that for you. Maybe I can be a part of it. Maybe I can bring a little awesomeness your way. Oh, I like that. I like that. You definitely do bring awesomeness to everything that you do. It's such a pleasure to have you as a guest on the show. And uh, would you tell the audience how they can get in touch with you and uh, how they can reach you and whether or not they should reach you? I know they should, but you, you got to tell them about it. It's super easy. Just go to support at customerconversionformula.com. Go to customerconversionformula.com to get the free program for sure. There's all kinds of other stuff there uh, as well if you're interested. But if you're looking to get to me, support at customerconversionformula.com is the best way. It will get to those people who are trust people who will hound me until I answer. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Thank you for being with us today. It's been a real pleasure. I've learned a lot. I know my audience has learned a lot. And I hope to see you again real soon. And thank I have you a final for, thought for oh, you. Go, sorry. Final thought. The world is run by people who show up. So if you're going through hell, don't stop. I love it. I love it. And thank you for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed Ridgely as much as I did. I know you did. And that uh, you'll be back with us again next week. Thank <laughs> you.